Ladies and gentlemen, I am so excited to be joined here uh, uh, with some wonderful performers. Can you guys introduce yourselves to the camera, please? Hello, I'm Sophie Niminet. I'm John Leo. And together you guys are the feature performers at the Downtown Clown Review Woo! for what's the, um, just tell me what you're, what you'll be presenting. We'll be presenting. <laughs> Excerpts from our show, Peg Ass Us. It's, it's Pegasus. <laughs> Peg Ass Us. Which is supposed to be pronounced Pegasus. So uh, tell us, tell me first, tell me a little bit about the show. Like what, what is, what, what's it about? What, what are you guys doing? Well, we decided to call it a sex ed burlesque <laughs> because it's just definitely part educational, but not in the realm at all of sexual education, like in health class, like in high school. It has songs and nudity and puppets. And we've also decided to call it a sweet love story because it's a sweet love story about two people who, who may love differently, maybe out of the norm, and how they find each other, how they negotiate uh, boundaries and, and all that, and how they define, uh, this looks like it's news to you. <laughs> <laughs> we have very our characters have very different ideas about what the show is obviously and that's what I think what the strength of the show is is that it's actually John and Sophie in the show and my my, my character wants to call it Pegasus and it, have it be fluffy and about love and, and all that and Sophie's character was happy talking a lot about the dildo and lubrication and the anatomy and the things you find yeah, <laughs> and that's uh, just that's a very clown concept. You know, playing the actual dynamic. Can yeah. you talk a little bit about like how that came into your creative process? <laughs> it, it was a little unavoidable because <laughs> <laughs> we came up with the idea to do a show on the subject of pegging, and then as we, which for tried... people who don't know, oh, can you tell them? It's you tell it in the show. <laughs> okay, pegging according to Wikipedia is a sexual act where a woman penetrates a man with a strap-on dildo. So we decided upon the subject, and then as we were trying to figure out how to do a show about the subject, our natural different takes on that delivered themselves as a conflict for the show. <laughs> In our very first rehearsal. Our very first, like, playing some music, and I wanted it to be a folky love song, and Sophie wanted to interrupt me with all sorts of... Like she kept on sticking her finger in the guitar, and uh, uh, uh. and so, the, so the, the, I mean, clown is a clown is like is the rules, and then breaking the rules, and then and, and in this relationship, in in this show, my character I think is sort of like the rules. He's definitely he's definitely driven by like society's expectations of him as a man, as a person, as a as an sexual educator. He's got all these about himself and about what society needs, and which. The audience does or doesn't, but he's, he's the rules, and Sophie's character is constantly breaking that, those rules and, and presenting the, the interruption, the, the play. Perversity. The what? Perversity. Perver diversity, too. And diversity, yes. <laughs> so uh, besides uh, clowning, what other theatrical forms have influenced your work or influenced your work on the show? Definitely drag performing. Um, and cabaret style. Um, yoga. Yoga. Um, yeah, cabaret, music. Um, theater. Puppetry. Puppet yeah. <laughs> and theater, enough. you know, and, and like just the idea that in a, in a show the characters can change over time. You know, it's, it's kind of, I think, very traditional, like my traditional theater where my character has an arc. He, he, it loosens up, so to speak, throughout the whole show. Isn't it called a peripatia? Uh -huh. That that realization, the moment of peripatia. It would be bad we've, if I'm wrong. We've got peripatia in our we can show. Look it up. <laughs> yeah. You know about that peripatia? I liked it because it sounded like perineum. You know. Oh yeah. And... Now. Uh... <laughs> I, uh, I was a trained dancer in college, um, but the dances I was making weren't quite dance. They weren't quite theater. And so I made, 
I, I, but I made these like sort of these spectacles. These I, my senior project in college was this two hour long spectacle with stilts and a uh, marching band that went across campus and the site specific th- stuff and. And naked people in the streets. And there was naked people in the streets yes. who were doing a reverse strip teases into, they were doing strip teases into our president, the, the president of the college who had bow tie. And it, definitely wacky, brought all sorts of physical theater elements together, uh, circus and, and mask and, and, and uh, specifically uh, with Sue Morrison up in Toronto, the sort of emotional re- revelatory nature of it, re- sort of the revealing of, mm. of emotion and stuff, which I think uh, in, in, in our show is definitely rings true, like really happens, you know, really go through an emotional uh, for the audience. Um, I, I did theater undergrad, but in a program that didn't go into any realm of physical theater and it was doing some summer workshops up at Delarte um, that I started understanding this world, mask, commedia, and, and that just led on to, um, once I got out of school, uh, doing work with puppetry, and then took some clown workshops. I do training regularly in Suzuki and, and did a lot of viewpoints as well, so that was the training aspect. and. Uh, keep doing it and the, what's neat about our show i think is that in a lot of ways my character is doing the more held inner inner work of suzuki and viewpoints and that kind of stuff i i think and then her character as a clown <laughs> is doing a lot of like what i trained to do and so it's really neat Uh, plug. Yeah. Butt plug. Butt plug. <laughs> we love to plug our show. Um, it is going to be at the Brick Theater in Williamsburg, Brooklyn, on Metropolitan Avenue, uh, on Valentine's weekend, the Friday and Saturday at eleven, and then the following weekend at eight p.m. And we have a website, packofothers.org, that has all the information. <laughs> And some very noticeable flyers. Not to cut that, but okay. And then also Don't here. Don't cut it. <laughs> Edit it, I mean. There's, and there's the Pegasus. There's the Pegasus. Oh, okay. <laughs> okay. Well, and there is, and in the show, there is Pegasus, Pegasi. Uh-huh. There are Pegasi. Andy Kaufman. And Samuel Beckett, that, that, that realm of clown where it's really drawing on the sort of the uncomfortable, like the moment where like, is this, is, is that person for real? Is this really happening? What the, uh, you know, sort of bringing people to the land of uncomfortable. Definitely uh, f- the work of Taylor Mack. Have you ever seen him perform? No. Oh, oh yeah. Awesome. Awesome. <laughs> and that r- really excites me. Um, but when, when you you started asking us about anything else we'd like to say and this is an inspiring element of doing our show is that we've had fantastic conversations with audience members and friends who have come right after the show it's always go down to the bar and people wanting to talk about things that they say they've actually never talked about before (laughs) except maybe maybe with their partners which is kind of, for something that is predominant in people's lives, it's exciting to be talking and giving them space to talk about it. So, mm-hmm. yeah, it was really exciting that's... to realize that that's that that's a responsibility of the theater maker when it really hits a chord. Is that is that people are going to want to talk about it? People are going to have an avenue for that, and so it's yeah. really exciting. <laughs>